we're together tonight. Oh, it's real. <laughs> This is so amazing. Ah! Hey, Tendai. Hi. Oh, God. Tendai. Tendai. Oh, God. Guys, we are in the Thank prison. Thank you for joining us, Tendai. Pleasure, guys. Thank you for having me. This is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It must be surreal for you. So, what I'm going to do is I'm still admitting some people into the meeting, but I think we can okay. start. All right, great. Yeah, I think we can start. Uh, is Chiedza here? Chiedza? Yes, I am here. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Uh, we can hear you. You're very faint. You can go ahead and begin. Well, okay, hi, everyone. Some of you guys came in after I initially said hi. Um, so like we spoke about in the group, we're very lucky to have our celebrity, our international <laughs> superstar with us today. Um, and it's very special for us, especially because today's the day that you guys will usually rent onto Netflix. So um, we know you, you're very busy today. So we're very grateful that you made some time to spend with us. So some of us have watched the movie and some of us haven't. So I think I don't know. But um, Sorry, Chiyad, you're very faint. Like We can hardly hear you. Um, I can. Hello? Hello? Mm, I can hear you, Chiedza. Hi, okay, I can hear we can hear you, hear you but now. you're extra faint. Okay, um, I'll try get earphones, but I think I'll just hand over as well. I was just essentially saying that um, some of us have watched the movie, some of us haven't, but we just wanted to have, you know, um, some insight from you, and I guess for people to be able to ask questions that they have. And thanks again for joining us. Thank you, Chi. Thank you, Chiedza. Cool. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Thank you guys for um, inviting me. Uh, I see a lot of familiar faces and it's so great. It's like I'm talking to my friends. So you guys can ask any questions. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool, guys. It's cool. Okay. Yeah. Um... So what's the etiquette for asking questions? Are we asking in the chat group or you're gonna, or people need to raise their hands and you pick? I think yeah. I think if people raise their hands, it would uh, it would coordinate it would coordinate the questions really well, especially for Tendai, so that she hears everyone and everyone gets a chance. Mm. Um, I don't know how the raising hand thing works. <laughs> it works like. Um, okay, Nyasha raised that. Nyasha has raised. No, no. I was practicing. I was oh, how do you raise your hand? This <laughs> <laughs> is a real thing, guys. Okay, That's you, you say I'm hand. practicing, testing, one to testing, one to two. <laughs> yes. Like when the box comes on you, that's you raising your hand, right? Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Raikwa right. right. has a question. Okay. Thank you. Hi, how are you? Hi, Farai. Excellent, yeah. Um, I, I watched the... Uh, um, the movie at midnight so oh. i tried to make sure that at least yeah I, I i got the front seat and i thoroughly enjoyed it but without spoiling it for everyone else um i just want to briefly know a bit about your background in acting i, I noticed that you studied that it was at uct or in cape town just uh for some of us who may not know just share with us your brief background in acting and um, yeah how you found yourself having the lead role in this particular movie Okay, great. Thank you for asking. I I went to school to I went to UCT to study media. And then while I was there, I basically discovered drama that I could study drama. I could take courses in drama. So I was very shy. For those people who actually know me from high school or like primary school, they're probably really shocked that I became an actress because um I was very shy growing up. And so I decided, oh, let me take drama just to, you know, build my confidence. And also I was really passionate about literature in high school. And so uh, I was like, this is a perfect course for me to take to just kind of build my confidence. I fell in love with drama after, uh, after a semester and I decided to actually add it as a major. And so by, by the time I graduated, I was, had this thing in my mind that I was gonna be an actress. So that's how it actually all started. And then I broke it to my parents that I wanted to be an actress and then 
Um, the following year, I got an agent by, because I'm based in South Africa right now, I got an agent and then I um, started auditioning three years without any work, fast forward to my first gig um, on SABC, um, a couple of TV gigs, like over a year. And then, then I decided I was going to try tap into the Zimbabwean market by messaging Doja, if anybody knows him. And I messaged him on Facebook, asking him actually, just if he was working on anything really, that I could just come and be like a spectator or just assist on something. I was going to be in Arari for my, one of my best friend's wedding. And mm -hmm. then, um, then literally in those text messages, he said that he was working on a film and he was still looking for his lead actress. That's how I got onto the cook off is by texting Joe randomly on Facebook. Um, obviously they asked me to send a show reel and they asked, um, and then he sent me the script. Thomas Brickle sent me the script that he had written, beautifully written. And I, I fell in love with the story. I was like, yeah, no, definitely. I'd love to be part of this project. Um, so literally this was on a Wednesday, let's say on a Wednesday. Then I was in Zim on a Saturday. We started filming on the Monday. So everything happened within a week. That's how it happened. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it, was, filming. It, was, it was like a miracle. No, me, me getting the role happened like within a week. Oh, last okay. minute yeah like everything happened within a week and then the filming um was for a, over a month and a half i was only there for about a month and um, but everything was done within a month and a half hmm. yeah. <laughs> thank you anybody else it's a pleasure okay. for I. thank you for asking I hope I didn't bore anyone with the history lesson. Oh my gosh. No, not yeah. even. Uh, can <laughs> I ask who you raise your hand? Okay. Um, Al okay. Okay, so there are two people, Alistair and Chiesa. Okay. Hi, today. Hi. You and I go way back. So I'm going to ask a question that I asked you a long time ago for everybody else. What was the question? <laughs> Remember when I wanted to try my gig at acting and I was so nervous? You did. I remember. Anyway, I'll tell you about that. But the question for everybody else is, um, there's, there's a lot of actors in the world, like big shot actors that didn't go to school for acting. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, like, it's a profession that a lot of people can take even after they've done whatever they've done in life but like what does it really take to be a really good actor is it looking the part is it actually getting into the techniques and the methodology of how acting works or just simple passion what exactly makes a good actor schooled or not hey that's a great question as well so you're right about acting being, um, I think everyone, I think any actor needs to start with at least natural talent. So you generally have an acting talent of some sort. And then what, what we mean by uh, going to school, you don't have to go to university, you know, I don't think that's necessary actually. But what you do need is some kind of training. So you don't have to do the training at a university. It could be through an acting coach. And I know, like you said, I also know a lot of people who've um, trained, but not at a university. So they train with acting coaches. Um, they train with different institutions that are not necessarily like academic institutions. The point is, though, that you do need training. So natural talent is not enough. And you'll find that those people um, like George Clooney or I don't know who else you could name that didn't go to school, they have had that training over the years because it is important. You do need training. You need to know where to stand. You know, when, like there's some techniques or general etiquette that you do need to learn. Even for auditions, there is a certain type of etiquette that you need when you go for auditions. Even just knowing like where to stand when you're filming something, how it works, the three camera system, the like hitting the, the mark, things like that. There's some terminology that is good for you to know that you can only learn if you go uh, and train. And like you said, also, um, there are some acting techniques also that are very, very important for you to learn so that, so that you can get your own style of acting and also so you can have a system that you follow when you get a script. 
you know, like analyzing character, um, knowing, um, yeah, just knowing like how to execute a role properly. Those things you learn, you know, you could do YouTube videos, but I feel you would need like that one-on-one. -on -one. Um, the thing of acting is that it's really, the more you, you train with other people or with someone, the better you become because they give you feedback because you need that feedback and that critique for people to actually, for you to know whether you're doing it right. You know, like, like right now when people are watching the film, I'm sure everybody's critiquing everyone and everything about the film. And, you know, it, that's the great thing about doing it at school or doing it in a training program of some kind is that you get all that kind of, all that critique in a safe space before you take yourself onto camera and, you know, the whole world is seeing you. So I think it's very important to be trained. And then, like you said, it's not enough to just be talented. Um, you need the training, you need an agent. Like you just need a support structure that works really well. And unfortunately in Zimbabwe, I don't think we have that yet, which is frustrating to say the least. Um, but I know there are people right now, and I'm, I'm part of that group of people who are trying to change um, the structures and trying to push for a more formal structure so people can actually build careers in the arts properly and not just you know kind of do it as a hobby because it's so unnecessary i, I want to be a professional actress and so everything should be done professionally so um that's what i hope i answered your question or your comments yeah you did um you answered my question there's we you've actually said this to me before so i'm just doing it for everyone else <laughs> to hear um but yeah I agree on the whole structured thing. It's I won't take people's time <laughs> in expounding on that. We'll talk. We'll talk about it later. But thank you for answering my question. Pleasure. Thank you, Alistair. Okay, someone. Um. Well. Okay. Oh wait. So the questions on the chat, and then there are people raising their hands. So what do we yeah. do? Do we alternate? Yes. You you can alternate. Okay. Um. I don't know. Do you want to start with the Sikelo Dube? She asked a question on chat. Can I read it to you? Yes, yes, please. All right, so it says, how did your parents take it the first time you said you were going to be an actress? What's your advice to young stars with talent, but our society and culture norms become a hindrance? Girl! <laughs> right. So when I told my when I told my when I told my rent that I wanted to be an actor, I actually had to sit them down because I knew it was going to be like big news. I sat big them chance. down. Yeah, I sat them down, and then I, I I literally just broke it down to them. You know, I know I graduated with media, but remember I also did drama. And by the way, um, I think drama is actually what I want to do. And they literally just said, <coughs> "Oh, you are so joking." this is going to be a phase, you'll get over it, please look for a job, you know? Literally, that's what they said to me. And I was like, I was very discouraged, but in my mind, I'm very stubborn as well, by the way, if anybody was wondering. Um, so in my heart, I was just like, okay, I'm gonna try to look for a job. Because I mean, they took me to university, I must honor that. So I did try for like seven months after uni, I was trying to get a job. So it was going to be PR or like marketing or whatever. And I was looking for a job and I didn't get any leads whatsoever. And I was so depressed because now I was trying to force myself to get a job when I really wanted to do something else. Eventually I decided to just follow my heart and I started doing like these MC gigs. And that led, one thing literally led to another just by me deciding to like start at least MC or like, you know, to keep that creative aspect of myself um, alive. And so literally, I would say to any young person, and the thing is, like I said, you at least have to have some kind of confidence that you can become a, a good actress or actor. Um, I, I was confident because drama was my top major at university. So I had, I'd had received a really good feedback that I can act and it's not like I'm just kind of winging it. Um, so I had potential and I knew that, you know, if, if I just got an, a chance, it could be something, right? It could be a career. So though my parents didn't understand that, I knew it, so I started working on it. And to be honest, it's, the last um, eight years have been the most hardest ever. Um, a lot of sacrifice.
sacrifices, like 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 um, the question is saying, um, there aren't enough. Uh, what is it? Social norms. Someone mentioned. Let me just check. Let me read it properly before. Um, yeah, it says our, t our society, our cultural norms, are hindrance. I mean, like yeah. we've already spoken about the structures, but like just the general perception. So now imagine me telling people that, oh yeah, I, I'm, I'm. In fact, that's because I I believed in it so much. I started um, just introducing myself as an actress. So people would be like, oh, what do you do? I'm like, I'm an actress. And at that time I hadn't even acted in anything yet. But I, I started like just speaking it into being and just kind of really trying to embody it and trying to really just take, because it's hard for people to take you seriously when they don't think much of it, right? Like they don't think acting is a thing. So they won't take you seriously. Um, but I mean, I had gone to school, so I, I literally would, and this is the thing about training as well, it kind of give you, gives you that confidence. People take you seriously. If I say I have a degree in acting, you know, in drama, people are like, oh, okay, so she kind of knows what she's doing, which is good. That's why it's important to have some kind of certificate or something. Don't just say I'm an actress. Like, you know, try to get some kind of substantial evidence, because we do need people to take us seriously. Um, so yeah, just it just kind of fighting those perceptions of what people think of acting and the film industry in general, the arts in general, it's been a big, big aspect of, um, of my career. And literally, it's, it's literally about staying positive. I will not stress this enough. Staying in the right mind frame, um, really being picky about who you're friends with, um, you, like having to make some couple of sacrifices, but hopefully like, I, I personally believe, or I want to try to make sure that, you know, the people who follow after me don't have to go through what I went through, because it was very hard. It was very painful. <laughs> so I wouldn't want anybody to go through what I went through. Um, and I mean, there are already some young girls that I know who find it very, it's frustrating. But I think if we work together, we can get somewhere. And so, um, especially about changing society and cultural norms you know mm -hmm. and how people think about the arts it's very important uh, but we have to do it as a society we have to do it together so whoever is in the arts needs to step up be professional uh, change the perception by actually living a professional life and you know pursuing it seriously and being a serious person um, I don't know how to explain it but just showing that we can actually be people who bring in um, money into the economy or, you know, drive the economy in some way or another. And like this international kind of spotlight that we have with Netflix is great to show that exactly, uh, that we can bring positive, a positive, we can build a positive image using film, using storytelling and stuff like that. So we need more of those kinds of um, perceptions of the arts instead of the other ones. And I'm sure everybody knows what the other ones are. Oh, thank you. I will stop now that you've said I've answered well. Thank you. I will stop. <laughs> Preach. <laughs> okay. Um, we have a question from Nyasha. Nyasha, you can go ahead and ask your question. Yes. Hello. Um, Hello. Yeah. So there's something that you said uh, that interested me when you were talking about how you messaged the, um, I don't know, is it the director? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. On Facebook. The producer. Yes. On Yes, on Facebook. So I wanted to ask, like, um, what encouragement do you have for us in, you know, approaching people who we know share the same interests as the fields that we want to go into? It could be acting, it could be business. Like, how do you get that confidence to approach people and just take that shot and say, you know what, this is my portfolio, this is what I'm doing, you know, are you interested? How did you get that courage to do that? It was desperation. <laughs> no. okay let me explain myself but like like i said i graduated and i had this really really hectic you know when you feel like this is what i'm meant to be doing in life and if i don't do it i'm going to be miserable that's the kind of like per sense of purpose i had about acting and so like we've all discussed already there are no structures there's no support system and i was kind of stuck my parents want me to get a job but i don't even know the first step to take to being an actress so I started like literally stalking people. I, I took a lot of things into my own hands. Yeah. I would stalk people. Even how I got my agent was me approaching somebody face to face. They started okay. a conversation with me, but I approached them and I spoke to them. 
Um, mm -hmm. But like I said about being professional, it's mm -hmm. also about literally approaching people intentionally, purposely. The people that I know in the industry are people I've stalked in a good way, not in a bad way. Mm -hmm. Like I literally, <laughs> um, I watch what they do, I follow yeah. them, and then I am actively involved in maybe what they want to do. Like what, like what happened to Joe, I had messaged him to ask mm -hmm. him if I could collaborate or assist him on something. Okay. See, I wasn't like, I wasn't uh, contacting him to just say, hi, how are you doing? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I was actually saying, listen, um, I have something to offer. Can I be part of your team? Can I just come and see what's happening? Can I contribute mm -hmm. in some way or another? And I mm -hmm. think that's at least the first step that you can make. Or if you want to, if you admire someone, I know, I know, I don't know if you, you guys know Tongai Chirisa, Sibongi Um, yeah. even Rachel Nyarazo Adams. Those three mm -hmm. people, I really admire them. And I literally inboxed them. But I started off the conversation with like my own insights about their careers or what they've said in a talk or, mm -hmm. you know, um, what do you think about this and that? Like, you know, really trying to pick their brains on, mm -hmm. on, on a subject that I'm interested in that they could literally help mm -hmm. me. Because you'd be surprised that a lot of people do want to help. Yeah. Um, so don't be afraid to... To approach but when you do approach be purposeful be intentional be professional um offer help try to be a team player um don't act you know some people act like people owe them something no one owes you anything no one's gonna mm -hmm. save you no one owes you anything you have to work hard um some things do come easy but it's, it should be a shock you should be expecting to get stuff because you work hard right not because it just it's just going to fly onto your lap you, you're supposed to like literally be ready and willing to work hard so i hope i've answered your question yes thank you well answered Tendai. that was well really answered. Like, quite <laughs> <laughs> you touched a spot there <laughs> thank you. you touched a spot there um i also have a question but i will ask it after chiedza chiedza has something that she wants to ask you ask you as well okay cool chiedza go ahead Chieda, hello. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, now we can hear you. Okay, thanks. Um, hi, Tenda, it's me again. Um, hi. so I wanted to ask about where you think our film industry is right now. I think a lot of excitement that we're seeing on social media is because people are hoping that. Um, we'll see more Zimbabwean content being pushed to the international markets. So from yeah. your point of view, as someone who's actually in the industry, did we get this opportunity? Obviously, it's a good movie and you guys worked really hard, but is it kind of like an off chance and we still have a long way to go before we'll see more of our content having the quality that it needs to have? Or um, as an industry, we are moving in the right direction. I am so glad that I decided to do an act. I have no idea, like, how, how, what, like you said, guts I had, but like, this is actually, I think, a very promising time for the industry. And I know, like I said, there's still very structural problems and economic problems. But people like Joel Jago, Thomas Brickle, the fact that those people exist, there is a lot of hope for our film industry. Um, and also there's another film that I actually did called Gonarejo. The writer, Sidney Kaivawashi, he's also quite brilliant. Um, and I mean, because the world has become such a small place, people like Zimbabweans who've traveled, who, who live in other places, if there is like um, a really good script with a great storyline and a bit of money, we can get those people on board as well. The thing with this Netflix um, opportunity is that at least it opens a door. Netflix, once you start working with them, right, you get more opportunities to, to continue, like, you know, getting onto the platform. That's how they generally do it. Like, once you have a foot in the door, like, you literally can keep pushing your stuff on there. The question is about quality, it's about standards of production, and those can be attained. They can be achieved, especially if now, you know, people see that there's potential. Like, I mean, yeah, there's so much, there's room for, I wouldn't say Cook Off is like the uh, most amazing film because I, I would be lying, but there is a lot of potential, right? 
And we, if we could do that with like a minimum budget, you can only imagine like what we're going to do with lots of money. And that's how we need to start thinking is how do we get the money in? And like I said, because people haven't been taking us seriously before, it's been a problem to get investment, to get people to like invest in our storytelling and in our narratives and stuff. But once people start taking us seriously, they will start investing because there is money to be made in the film industry. You know, yeah. I mean, think of Hollywood. It's a whole like, it's, it's a whole world of money. Like people make so much money and it's the same thing. Um, there is a lot of money to be made and it's like any business in, uh, venture, like you need to show that you can make it happen. And there are people, there are, you'd be surprised the amount of people who are in film and TV, but just based around the world. <laughs> And if those people can see that there's potential in them, they will come back and they will, you know, use the, their talents and their skills on a Zimbabwean product uh, production. So yeah. I feel like this is like the dawning, actually. Like this is the beginning of something amazing in the industry. And I'm really excited. I'm happy that I decided to be an actress um, because I'm actually, because the thing is, any good thing that comes from here on is hope for my career, right? Like, okay, fine, at least I know I'm gonna have work next year or the day after and whatever. So I'm really hopeful um, and I, I can see it. And, and there's so many conversations being had right now. People are producing and they're working on scripts, they're working on concepts. So just keep your eyes and ears open. There's more to come, definitely. Thank you. I just had a, a follow-up question um, and that was just to say, what can we do to support you guys um, besides watching on Netflix and getting your numbers up? You mentioned that like um, this is a time where people should invest more and we really want to make sure that the industry has that push that it needs to, you know, catapult. So what, what would you say that we can do to help you guys? I would say um, besides, besides watching right now, I would say, please share all our posts and like, um, I mean, definitely watching is a great thing because if Netflix sees that many people are watching the film, then like I said, again, they'll want to work with us again. Um, but besides that, I think just kind of generally supporting, if you have an artist friend, an actor friend, just be supportive, go watch their shows. You'd be surprised, like people don't watch other people's stuff, like local stuff. Um, people are only probably watching the same movie because it's on Netflix and it's cool. But usually people don't support each other and it's sad. Like I do theater as well and sometimes the theater, you know, is empty when people are, you know, performing and stuff, which is sad. There's sometimes when it's really good attendance, but we need support on all fronts. Audiences, um, if you if you want to collaborate with your artist friends on making a, a film, if you have the funds do that support by investing as well in your friends work um, if you're an artist then um, if they're artists and yeah really what we need is and also if you have if you have a skill that you think that the industry could use because you know the industry isn't just made up of actors people have this perception that the industry is made up of only actors and filmmakers but we need lawyers, we need accountants, we need yeah. those structures that I'm talking about are actually people from other industries, other professions mm -hmm. that work within the industry. So we need marketers. Oh my gosh, marketers. The reason why people didn't know about cook off is because marketing is expensive and we didn't have a, market, yeah. a marketing budget, right? So if you're a marketer, if you're a, a lawyer, we need people who help us with contracts. You know, artists sometimes are abused because, um, you know, they work for nothing, close to nothing, because there's no one representing them and helping them sign contracts. We need um, accountants, like I said, for, for budgets, for filmmaking and stuff. If you're good at project management, you could do great as a producer. You know, I mean, there's mm -hmm. so much that can be done. So the industry needs all of that. Thank you. Thank you, Jada. Um, tonight, I have a question. Um, uh, I remember the other time, and a lot of people asked me this question, so I wasn't, I, I'm, I'm normally not as brave as you, <laughs> if I would say. Uh, I remember the other time you were in Zim, we were by film, by hey, the You remember, Karen, you remember. 
Yeah. Me and Pandi. Well, and we were talking about that. the arts industry. <laughs> and we're talking about the arts industry in Zimbabwe, right? And just yeah. how much a lot of, you know, how if you're an actor, if you're, if you're basically talent, especially in this country, you're not making that much money. And mm-hmm. I'm sorry to say I sold out a little bit. I sold out. But you kept going. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I guess my, my question to you is like, you mentioned even before that, you know, there's not a lot of money within the industry yet, but there's so much potential for this industry to make so much more. Um, outside of, um, you know, outside of like uh, the additional work that you talked about, the accountants, the marketers, the everyone getting together, what else do you think can really be done to not only just advance the, the industry, but to make sure that people actually earn real money from it? Because the problem that maybe it doesn't work is because people, you know, end up uh, not, I won't say selling out, but you have to put food on the table at the end of the day. So you will hustle, but you will still do something else. You know what I mean? But like you're always talking about feeding your focus and everything, and which is what you did and it brought you this. What advice would you give to like people, like talent that is struggling to that degree? I would say it's definitely um, like on top of everything that I've said. Mm-hmm. Um, see, the thing is, one thing leads to another. The moment we have money in the in the in the industry, like people start investing, and then also like people take themselves seriously. So if you're a filmmaker, if you're an actor, you take yourself seriously. You make sure you're training. You make sure you're sharpening your skills. So that by the time you get a gig, whatever the product is, everybody has been sharpening themselves, right? So everybody's mm-hmm. been working on their on their craft, so that we get a good product. Because as, like film, the thing with filmmaking is it's a collaborative process. It is. You know, it's yeah. not just an actor. There's a there's a script writer, there's a producer, there's a makeup lady, there's a wardrobe lady, there's lights, there's grips, there's there's a cinematographer. There are all these people with different skills coming together. So the the more each department or each skill is being sharpened. By the time we come together, we create a fantastic product. Mm-hmm. And then when we've made one product, we now need money to keep making more. Because the thing is, how you build a career is by continuing to get more, more, more and more work. So right now, let's say um, I, I've been on cook off. I need to get another gig, right? Like yeah. what you're saying about putting food on the table. Like you have yeah. to keep getting work for you to continue getting an income. And so once we have, because if you look at Hollywood or even Nollywood, right, they, they have a system where they actually churn out a lot of like movies because they've got a system now. And yeah. that's the kind of system we need to kind of build in Zimbabwe. And it takes a lot of dedication and it takes, it actually takes, um, like the people you see um, who are kind of leading the path right now are people who, who have kind of just stuck to it. And they, they have also sacrificed a lot. But really, to be honest, it's, it's like one thing will lead to another. Once we get the money, once people shop in their skills, once people um, start, you know, like I said, we need now marketing and distribution to work. Mm-hmm. Once that happens, and because we can already see there's a demand, so we just need to keep going and kind of create that a cycle of production. It's actually like a production mm-hmm. line. You know, mm. people should see it that way. Um, mm. And because the film itself is like a product, I know people do business in this group. You know what I'm trying to say, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it's almost yeah. like you're running a business and the film is, the film, each film is a product and you have to just kind of create a production line that keeps going and going mm. and going. And that way people are earning money all the time. Um, but mm. that needs money, like I said. So we just need to t- start attracting some investments. And trust me, from what I've been hearing so far, like people are beginning to want to invest, which is great. Right. So, That's good. Yeah. That is. So you I, can, we can safely say that it's financially the industry. It's financially, it's financially what? Stable. Stable. Like you can survive. Right. You don't have to like do 50 things. You can. You mean right now? Yeah. Right now, it's a bit difficult. Yes. I won't lie. Well, it's getting there, right? It's getting there, but I don't think people are making <laughs> enough films yet. To be honest, and even this one, I don't know if you've read any article, but right. 
even Cook-Off was made on a deferred payment. <laughs> and I think you know this yourself because you're in the film. Hello. Um, deferred yeah. payment, yeah. <laughs> right? So, <laughs> and it's been three years. So, I, I mean, deferred payment for three years. What were you going to be eating? You know what I mean? Uh, um, so. Exactly. So, yeah. again, so again, like, exactly. if we have more money in the industry, people can get paid on time and we can keep, like, recycling right. that money to make more films and um, mm-hmm. we just basically need more money in the industry. That's just the point. And we need people to then train and make sure that the standards of production are really good so we can sell it right. to as many people as possible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, we have a question here. Um, hi, Karen. Yeah, I'm uh, going to have to go soon, by the way. Yeah, no, no, no. This is the last question. This is from okay. Zenzo. Uh, he's you. asking, she describe what a fully fledged production company should have why is it that we don't have these structures? Secondly, why has the arts or creative industry not been able to monetize itself and whose, responsi- whose responsibility is it? I guess it's almost the same as the question that I asked. Where is the money supposed to come from? So you can wrap up with this particular question. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, money comes from a lot of places. Um, obviously, okay, I, I, I've been in South Africa. I studied here and I kind of have... Um, experience in the South African industry and I guess the government structures also help right Mm -hmm. um I know here they have a lot of support from there's even a whole there's even a whole um like organization called the National Video and Film Foundation that is specifically you know like government funded to make sure that you know films are made right Mm -hmm in South Africa. Mm-hmm. So that's huge. It's from the government. The government is basically funding films. Funding. But, but that comes from an understanding. It's almost like they, they, and they also partner with what, an organization called Brand South Africa. So there's a huge understanding in the South African market that films play a role in branding the nation. And that's okay. the kind of research we need to do in Zimbabwe. Like, is there enough mm-hmm. evidence? Do, are people who have the money, like I said, it's like a business proposal. Do people who have the money, are they persuaded? And like I said, it could be government. It could be coming from anywhere. It could be business people. It could be different organizations that can literally yeah. invest in film. I don't think we should ever limit it. It's just like commercials, right? Um, mm-hmm. Artists can also get uh, work from commercials. Actors can be in, on commercials and things like that. And uh, those are what those are, are business businesses that, want to partner with actors to promote their products and so they they create these commercials using the talent that is in the country so money can come from it can be a personal private investor who wants to help make this film so that they can get a profit out at the end of the day but the Hmm. point is uh it has to be a good proposal we need more research i think and i'm part of i want to drive this kind of research to show that you know there is there is an audience um and this is how we can help brand the nation. My thing, though, uh, with this whole thing, <laughs> my thing with this whole scenario, this whole issue is, is one thing to market Zimbabwe and say, oh, Zimbabwe is this really lovely place. And this is why I love Kokov. Kokov is not trying to be anything that it's not. Like, Zimbabwe is shown as it is. Yeah. There are potholes. Mm-hmm. There's, you know, there's everything in there. Nothing is sugar-coated. Just because the one thing about storytelling, yeah, the one thing about storytelling is that we don't want to lie and say, oh, Zimbabwe is this beautiful, amazing place. Um, yeah. And then people come here and they're like, oh, but we, th- we saw this in a film and we thought it was like, no. Like, it's about telling authentic stories um, with what we have, mm-hmm. who we are, but in a way that is still attractive and positive. And if we can yeah. find these investors, and like I said, they can come from anywhere. If we can find them, yeah. and you know, sometimes it's just about really thinking cleverly, like who is the best person to approach for this project who would be interested in my story like yeah. if you have a script who's interested in your story like maybe you've written about women and you and i know sometimes we don't want to go to ngos because then there's always an agenda or whatever but sometimes it's a good start if it's not uh, yeah. an ngo then maybe approach someone specifically a businessman but you have to have do you know people underestimate production companies in hollywood they have budgets of millions of millions and millions of dollars that break down every single expense and every single cost, you know? That's what I'm saying, we need accountants. Mm. People, you know, you, you, you take this business proposal to a businessman and you say, this is, this, these are my costs, this is, 
this is uh, what we, we we project will be the the audiences that will watch this film, like literally as a business. Um, mm. I think that business mindset is sometimes what's lacking in our in our in our industry. And if we can mm. just have more people who are thinking business mindedly, um, <coughs> we will go far. Because yeah. then people will, will be very resourceful in how they do their thing. Uh, it's not mm. just about filmmakers; it's about every industry. Potential of getting money is all corners of the of the country. Don't limit yourself and say I'm only going to look to the government because maybe it might not be the government will give you money. It could be somebody else. Yeah. So. Very true. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We don't want to, it's um, a but, long, but we really appreciate it. Even. Um, you know, uh, just just taking the time. It's a, we know it's a busy day. The film has just launched. Everyone is buzzing about it. So the yeah. few minutes that you came uh, to talk to us is great. Um, Tim Wani, if you can hear us, uh, if you have something to say. Um, trying to see if she is. I know she's here. <laughs> she's just probably not. Okay. Uh, I think, yeah. But anyway, thank you so much for joining us uh, today. Yeah. We really appreciate okay, it. Alistair. And say bye. If you have any few words before any of us start watching the movie, please do say them now. What can we expect? Uh, you know, what Karen, should, should we enjoy about you, the movie the most? Did you watch the movie, Karen? I yes, I did. Before. I'm repeating it today. I, I, I started watching it as soon as I got uh, home from work. So it's halfway <laughs> right now. I'm re- once we're done, I I'm watching it all over again. I watched it. I I'm watching it after, after this thing. So no spoilers, people, please. <laughs> we tried not to spoil it for Anesu, but you know how it is. We tried. We tried. <laughs> all right. Thank Anyways. you so much for joining us thank today. We really appreciate thank you. you. And so congratulations on the movie and everything. I mean, uh, we're really proud. I'm proud. Everyone's proud. To be a part of it and have something lovely. Yay, this is it's amazing. I, I totally feel your excitement. Um, and I'm I'm so grateful if, for everyone's support. Please share and like and um, let's take the film industry forward to get that. Yeah, definitely, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Um okay, our president said a great session there. Um, yeah. Thank you so much to guys. All right. Have a good awesome. day. Thank you. You too. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Okay, there's a link on the group chat for anyone who wants to join in on the watch party for the Cook Off movie. So if you go onto the group chat, you'll find the link and let's watch and enjoy. Bye. Bye. Hi, thank you, Karen. Thank you, everyone.